All right, ladies and gentlemen, be prepared to be amazed because I'm going to introduce you to the most incredible tarantula that has roamed the earth since prehistoric times and the tarantula that I consider to be the number one pet tarantula and that is Acanthoscuria geniculata, also known as the Brazilian giant white knee tarantula. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my female geniculata. And I brought her down here into my reptile room and set her up in this little tank here. She normally lives in my bedroom, believe it or not. <laughs> and at first glance, uh, you're probably thinking, that looks like a regular tarantula to me. <laughs> and let me assure you, this is no regular tarantula. This is the giant white knee tarantula. And the first interesting fact is this is the fastest growing tarantula of all tarantulas. It'll actually reach full size within two to three years. And a full size, full size giant white knee female can actually reach nine inches in a leg span. And let me tell you, let me show you this. I actually have a ruler right here, and I measured out nine inches. This is nine inches. So within within three, when she's three years old, she's gonna have a leg span of this entire aquarium. <laughs> she's gonna be a monster. And you can just take a look at how small she is right now. She is definitely. Uh, I would say she's probably a year old. <laughs> she's she's going to grow really fast and she's going to get really big. So the sheer size alone should tell you that this is one of the favorite tarantulas of pet keepers. They're always looking for something really big, really amazing, really incredible. And that's only the tip of the iceberg as far as what we can expect from this tarantula. So let me give you fact number two for a tarantula. A lot of tarantulas, they will actually hide. Most tarantulas uh, hide under a hide or in a, in a, in a web. They dig in the in the in the substrate, and this one is really bold and always out in the open, and that's really why I like Geniculata. Okay, so the reasons that this makes the best tarantula is the size. Number two is that it stays out in the open, and number three that it doesn't spin webs all over the place. And if you notice this tank, I've had her in here for about a week, and there are no webs at all. And I was thinking about getting another type of spider, something like the orange bitey thing, the OBT. Uh, they also call it the, uh, the orange baboon tarantula. <laughs> and that thing completely would web the whole tank and you would have a spider living in a cocoon. <laughs> and the thing I like about this is there's no web uh, and, and, it's, and she's always out in the open and there's no mess when you're cleaning the aquarium. Uh, there's there's no webs to mess with and it keeps for a really neat nice streamlined and clean uh, setup okay so the fourth reason I really like this tarantula is that it's really easy to feed so I actually started out and I had a tarantula I had some beginner tarantulas I had a Mexican red knee and uh, rose hair and let me tell you those are hard to get to eat they hardly eat they hardly move they don't really do anything they're just kind of like pet rocks and, and you'll wonder if it's alive and let me tell you if you throw something in here for this thing to eat you'll definitely know that this is the giant white knee because it'll pounce on that thing like you wouldn't believe okay since we're talking tarantulas and if you're out shopping for a tarantula you say for example you go to a reptile, uh, reptile show or maybe a reptile store and there's all especially the shows if you go to the the reptile shows there is a lot of tarantulas all over the place and I've done a lot of research in tarantulas and, and you really have to watch out uh, the number one thing you really have to watch out for is the bite and some of them uh, they don't really label them as venomous but they label them uh, if you get bit by some of those tarantulas uh, they consider it medically significant and you can suffer for months over that spider bite believe it or not and the good thing about this is they say it's got a little venom in it but not a whole lot of venom and, and the other thing you have to realize with a tarantula this size uh, if, it, if it's full grown, a full eight to nine inches across, the fangs underneath the mouth are, are up to an inch long. So if it's not really uh, a venomous spider, 
but they say the bite can cause significant mechanical okay, damage. Okay, speaking of those fangs, when this tarantula is full grown, believe it or not, it can take down a full size mouse with those fangs. And typically you feed it doobie roaches, a big one, and, and one about this size, I would say I would feed probably doobie roaches about an inch long maybe, uh, probably two a week. And, and if you're feeding crickets, this thing could probably handle like five or six crickets a week. <laughs> so some people have actually bred this tarantula in captivity. And if you put a male and a female together, one, the female can actually eat the male after they copulate. And when they, after they breed, the female makes an egg sac. And within that egg sac hatches out hundreds of little tiny baby <laughs> white knee tarantulas. And the first food is wingless fruit flies. So they're incredibly small. You have hundreds of tiny little baby tarantulas. And the tarantulas, if you don't separate them, they can actually eat each other. And they grow so fast within one year, those tarantulas can be four inches across. So as far as the care and husbandry of this tarantula, it's, it's a tropical tarantula from Brazil, which is South America, and it should be kept between 75 and 82 degrees, and it should be pretty humid in there. They, they recommend a humidity of about 75 percent, so you have, to, you have to really boost the humidity. And what I use is I use this coconut husk substrate, and some people will actually put like a living moss on top of the substrate. And the other thing you really want to watch, especially with this tarantula, is that it cannot take a fall. So you don't want anything like branches where it can get up on the branch and it can actually fall off because even a really small fall for this tarantula can permanently damage it. So you definitely don't want to uh, have it fall from any distance. Uh, I would say probably something like this uh, this little tunnel here, uh, raised tunnel is probably the maximum that I would feel comfortable with. Okay, another thing about this tarantula, it is definitely not a tarantula that you want to handle. And some tarantulas you can pick up and, and they're a lot more mellow than this one. I would say this one's a little bit more aggressive and when it gets big, the risk of getting bit and doing some damage is just too great. So I would definitely not recommend handling this tarantula. So let's talk about old world versus new world tarantulas. So old world tarantulas are in a whole different class than new worlds. Old world tarantulas, the first line of defense is a bite. <laughs> and, and you'll find some like the orange bitey thing that kind of, you put something in there and, the, and it, the first thing it does is it runs over and bites it. And a new world tarantula, especially with the, the white knee, is it has what they call urticating hairs on the back of the abdomen. And if it gets really agitated, the first line of defense is it'll kick those hairs up at you and uh, kind of irritate, uh, throw those irritating hairs at you instead of biting you. And that's another reason I really like this tarantula is the first line of defense is not the bite, it just kicks a few hairs at you. All right, another thing I really like about this tarantula is that it is a terrestrial and not an arboreal. An arboreal tarantula will climb up the glass, it'll hang out on the glass all day and sometimes it'll even web in the corner and you'll have a little uh, spider in on the glass in a web. And this one, I like it because it stays on the bottom. And it actually can climb the glass. If you really stress it out or agitate it, it can climb up on the glass. But most of the time, it's perfectly happy just hanging out in the open on the bottom of the enclosure. Okay, so let's talk about the lifespan of Janiculata. The females live about 12 years, so it's a pretty big commitment. I'd say it's almost equivalent on par with keeping a dog. They live about 12 years, so uh, it's, it's a pretty big commitment to buy uh, a tarantula, especially the females. The males don't live quite as long. And the other thing you have to realize is, uh, say for example, if you're in an office environment and you bring your tarantula to work, uh, first of all, you have to make sure nobody's terrified of tarantulas. And then second of all, you want to make sure that they don't use bug killer because uh, I believe it or not, I actually brought a tarantula to work and I had it sitting on my desk and for some reason I was going through tarantula after tarantula and I'm pretty sure it was the bug killer vapors coming in and killing it. As a matter of fact, I, uh, at one point I put a little 
carbon uh, little it was like a carbon impregnated fiber mat on top of the tank to try to keep the vapors out and it still didn't work I was still losing tarantulas so uh, the th you really want to watch that nobody's spraying bug killer the other thing you want to watch is that if you use a heat mat for temperature that you use a temperature probe and a thermostat to control that heat mat so if you just go to the store you buy a heat mat and you put it underneath even if the heat mat is spe specifically heat rated at a certain temperature I would highly recommend that you buy a separate uh, uh, controller to control that heat mat otherwise you could fry your spider okay so that wraps up my discussion of the Brazilian giant white knee tarantula if you're thinking about getting one I would highly recommend this particular species uh, the retail price on mine was $200 but I got it at a significant discount since I bought it on Black Friday so thanks for watching and I will see you next time